70% of all hip and knee replacements are due to osteoarthritis. It is estimated that as many as one in seven or 40 million Americans have some form of arthritic disease or joint inflammation. Arthritis is the number one cause of disability in America and limits the everyday activities of approximately seven million individuals. Of the more than 100 types of arthritis, the most common form is osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease. This disease causes the breakdown of the joint's cartilage. Osteoarthritis can affect any joint, but it most commonly occurs in the hips, knees, and spine. A joint is where the ends of two or more bones meet. For example, the hip is a ball and socket joint. It is formed by the upper end of the thigh bone, the ball, fitting into the socket part of the pelvis, called the acetabulum. Dr. Hugh B. Morris has been in the forefront of total joint arthroplasty, designing concepts and surgical techniques used in hip and knee replacement surgery throughout the world. Osteoarthritis, in very simple terms, is the cartilage surface of the joint having worn away. In a normal hip joint, the hip forms where the top of the femur, or the thigh, meets the acetabulum, which is the socket of the pelvis. The top of the femur is ball-shaped and fits snugly in the socket formed by the acetabulum. In the normal hip joint, there's a layer of smooth, glistening cartilage that cushions and protects the bone while allowing very easy motion. A patient suffering from osteoarthritis, the most common form of arthritis, will suffer from pain and limitation of motion in their joint. With osteoarthritis, the cartilage in the joint becomes damaged and wears away, leaving the underlying bones unprotected from wearing bone against bone. Overgrowth of bone called osteophytes may also restrict motion in the hip joint. As the disease progresses, the pain generally becomes worse and worse. Most people with osteoarthritis will never have surgery. In severe cases, however, surgical techniques like joint replacement of hips, knees, and shoulders have been successful in relieving pain and improving mobility. For many, such as in the case of Noreen Day, surgery was the only solution to restore her quality of life. Well, I started having uh, groin pain, and I was a walker. I walked every day, and I thought I had pulled a muscle. So I just rested it a bit and tried to go easy on it, and it went away for a while, and then it came back. So I finally went to the family doctor, and he checked me out, took an x-ray, and couldn't find anything, and he thought it was a groin muscle too. And I just kind of babied it along for almost a year, and it would come and go. So that's how it started. And I had no idea that my hip joint was the problem. And I was having pain more often, and I finally decided to go see an orthopedic doctor and have it looked at. And that's when I uh, went to see Dr. Morris. Noreen has a unique subset or type of osteoarthritis. Hers technically is called access disease. She has a form of arthritis where a small part of the cartilage is worn away. This has allowed fluid from her hip joint to form a very painful cyst. Her cyst has become quite large. With every step or every motion, fluid pressure increases in the cyst, and she is in constant and severe pain. I worked in the operating room for quite a while, and I, I've been a nurse for 30 years. And when my leg got worse and worse, I had to stop nursing because I could no longer walk eight hours a day. And it was devastating to me to have to quit doing the job that I love so much. It just changed my whole life. Noreen's x-rays clearly show the huge degenerative cyst which she has developed over the acetabulum, where the fluid has entered the bone through the defect in cartilage and destroyed her bone over the acetabulum. In her earlier workup, when we were trying to solve her pain problem, her MRI scan clearly shows the cyst and its huge size destroying the bone over her acetabulum. The larger ball is the ball of her true hip joint. The whitish area is the cyst which has destroyed the bone over acetabulum. A total hip replacement operation removes the damaged portions of the bone and replaces them with medical grade plastic and metal prosthesis that replicate the ball and socket joint. The socket is reamed out and a metal shell is put in place. Sometimes screws are used to secure the shell. A plastic lining in which the new ball will rotate is fit inside the shell. The other half of total hip surgery involves the thigh bone. The head of the femur is removed during surgery. The center of the bone is then shaped to receive the implant. 
Traditional surgery has used bone cement to hold the implant in place. Over the years, however, pressure on the joint often caused the cement to crack and the implant to loosen over time. Today, leading edge technology provides alternatives to the use of bone cement. An innovative compound called hydroxylapatite, or HA, is a naturally occurring mineral which closely resembles the properties of natural bone, and it's the predominant component of your tooth and bone enamel. This compound is applied directly to the upper portion of the hip implant. The ball of the stem then fits securely in the socket. Although there is no cure for osteoarthritis, there are a variety of known treatments and management techniques that help people control and reduce the effects of the disease. Research has shown that exercise and relaxation techniques are a vital part of managing osteoarthritis. It can help to decrease pain, increase general fitness, also maintain and increase ability to perform daily tasks.